All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So last time, last time we talked about how Adam and Eve ate fruit that they'd been forbidden to eat. Uh, not that they were never going to eat it, but they were were not supposed to eat it at the time. And so they gained knowledge that they weren't ready for. Uh, in order to keep them from being stuck in wickedness and to keep them from destroying paradise, God banished them, banished them out of paradise. They could and still did do what they were created for. They brought life and order into the world, and they began to build the family of humanity all in the image of God. But this became much more painful and much more difficult for them. So, even though they were unable to return to paradise, God did not abandon them. He gave them new animal bodies that allowed them to repent and repent to it. Uh, though these bodies would eventually die. With God's help, maybe they were taught by angels, maybe they figured stuff out on their own, um, maybe God helped them figure stuff out. They learned how to do things like how to plow fields and plant seeds so that they could grow crops to eat how to make fire and cook things, uh, how to take care of animals, but not for eating. Uh, Adam and Eve did not eat meat. God would not allow humans to eat meat until much later. Uh, and of course, God the Word himself would still come and would speak with them, uh, even though they had lost the connection that was there at the beginning. He would still come and talk to them. So in the fullness of time, Adam and Eve had their first child, a son. Would this be the son that was prophesied uh, to defeat the dragon, uh, to destroy the dragon? No, absolutely not. This is not that son. Uh, and they named this son Cain. Cain grew in strength, and he became a farmer, just like his father Adam. And he grew crops of all sorts that the family, so that the family would have good food to eat. And then later, Adam and Eve had their second child, also a son, still not the one who prophesied. Uh, and they named him Abel. Abel grew in strength, and he became a shepherd. Again, they didn't eat meat, but, uh, so they weren't eating the sheep, but they could use the wool for clothes, um, and maybe they enjoyed fresh sheep's milk uh, as well, things like that. Both Cain and Abel were, in their own ways, following the example set by their father as he repented. They worked hard to take care of the earth and to take care of each other and their family, uh, but their hearts were not the same. Abel uh, rejoiced in his work and thanked God for the blessings he gave and continued to give them. But Cain... Cain had a bitter heart. Maybe he didn't feel appreciated. Uh, he certainly didn't have a thankful heart, a heart that rejoiced in God's blessings or the world around him. Now, we don't know much at all about how Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel worship. We just don't know much. Uh, we do know, uh, we know that they did worship God, and we know that at least sometimes that worship included sacrifices. They would take grain or some other food or a lamb and they would burn it up before God as they prayed and God would see their sacrifice and he would, uh, as an invitation to come and be with them, and he would come and be with them. So one day when it was appointed for sacrifices to be made, Cain brought some of his crops and Abel brought a year old lamb from the flock. They both offered these up to God in sacrifice. They both brought from the work of their hands, offered it up to God in sacrifice. Uh, but God only responded to Abel's sacrifice. He didn't pay any attention to Cain's sacrifice. Why? Well, it wasn't that Cain did anything wrong in particular, um, but that he did it with a bad heart. He might have been sloppy or uncaring when preparing the sacrifice, uh, but maybe not. He could have done everything right on the outside, but still not have been right on the inside. Remember, God always sees things as 
they actually are. Uh, and he saw that Cain's heart was bitter and uncaring, but that Abel's heart was thankful. And so God rewarded Abel's good heart, uh, and he honored his sacrifice, but he rejected Cain's. Now Cain saw that God did not honor his sacrifice, uh, but that he had honored Abel's. Uh, and his bitter heart grew more so, and he envied his brother. What did Abel do that I didn't do? I worked hard for these vegetables. They're amazing. Does God not like vegetables? Right? Uh, or, or maybe God doesn't love me. Like, why is my little brother getting all the attention? Things were so much better before he came along. Sound familiar to any brothers and sisters? Okay. We've all had those moments, right? But God did love Cain. Right? Yes. Cain's gift hadn't been offered with a good heart. But God still loved him. He came and he talked with Cain. He said, Cain, why are you angry? Don't you know that even if you do everything right, but you have a bad heart when you do it, it's like you sin? Like that is still a sin? Look, Cain, I see your heart. You are in a very dangerous place right now. Sin is lurking at the door of your heart. It wants to come in. It wants to take you over and devour you. You must not let it. Do not give in to it. You must repent of your bitterness so that you do not become the food of sin, the food of the devil. Cain didn't listen. He didn't repent of the bitterness and resentment that he felt towards Abel. Still, for the time being, he didn't show Abel how he felt. Instead, he acted like he loved his brother. Uh, and then one day, when he had prepared things, he invited Abel to go for a walk. Abel, come and see what I found in my field. You're never going to believe it. Look, you just have to come and see. Okay, Abel said. And after they had walked a ways away from everyone else, so that they were alone, Abel said, so, um, where is this amazing thing you wanted to show me? Oh, it's, it's right over there, right by that boulder. Uh, so Abel went over to look. And while his back was turned, Cain picked up a good-sized rock. And he struck Abel over the head with it hard. Abel fell forward with a deep wound on the back of his head, maybe his neck snapped. Blood came out of the cut and it soaked into the ground. This was the first time that a human, or at least a human's body, had died. Uh, and so, for the first time, a human spirit entered the realm of the dead. And he felt the injustice of what had just happened. He cried out, Oh Lord, my God, what have I done to deserve this? My own brother whom I love, he's cut me down and ended my bodily life too soon. For a moment, it seemed like Cain had gotten what he wanted. Right? Maybe now I'll finally get some attention. At least I don't have to look at Abel's smug smile all the time. And then God came to see Cain again. Cain, where is your brother Abel? Remember, God knows all things. He's giving Cain a chance to, to come clean. He's giving Cain a chance to repent. Where is your brother Abel? How should I know? Am I my brother's keeper? Right? Like his father before him, Cain did not take responsibility for his actions. Cain, what did you do? Don't you know that your brother's blood calls out to me from the ground, begging for justice? The blood that you shed stands as a witness against you, and the ground that it soaked into you has heard it, and it will no longer give you good crops. It will no longer give you crops at all. No matter how hard you try, you will have no choice but to wander the earth and get food where you can. Even now, Cain could have repented. Like his father before him, he could have accepted responsibility 
and borne the consequences of his actions. But that is not what he did. He gave up in despair. What have I done? My guilt is too great for me. I know that there's no way that you or anyone else could forgive me. If the ground will no longer allow me to farm, I'm going to have to go away from here. I'm never going to be able to talk with you or see you again or the rest of my family. And if anyone finds me, they'll know what I've done and they'll kill me. No, Cain, you are absolutely, completely wrong. I still love you. There is forgiveness possible for you. There is still forgiveness even for this. Look, I will protect you by putting a sign on you, forbidding anyone to kill you. If anyone harms you, I will avenge you seven times over. You will be safe. Thanks. But I know you can never really forgive me. And so Cain left. And he went further away from me, further from his mother and father, to a place where he didn't have to see paradise or think about what he had done and what he no longer had. Uh, rather than bear the consequences of his actions, he found a way to work around them. He gathered people together, other brothers and sisters, and nephews and nieces, and he formed a city so that they could take care of him, and he wouldn't have to. Uh, this new city... And Cain and his descendants and those with them, uh, they would get into much, much worse trouble. Sin would indeed devour them. Just as God warned, eventually they would come close to destroying everything in their grief. We'll talk about that next time. In the meantime, let's go back to Adam and Eve. They had lost their two oldest sons. One of them had been murdered by their brother, by his brother, and the other, the murderer, in his unrepentant guilt, has fled as far away from them as he could get. But God granted them another son. Still not the one prophesied, but this time we're at least on the right track. And they named him Seth, which means replacement. Oh, that's not really a nice name. Not a great name, no. Um, so Seth and his, some of his descendants, some of his descendants, would stay faithful to the Lord God and would walk in thankful, humble repentance for the rest of their lives. But we'll talk about that next time, too. That's it.